an intruder broke into his house around 2 a.m. For real, for real. Yeah. It was about 2 in the morning. And, uh, you know, my alarm went off. Not not the alarm, but the entry alarm. Like, in other words, like, if you have an alarm, when you walk in your house, the alarm goes, yeah. and gives you a chance to turn it off. So that went off. So he came through an entry door. So I'm like, you know, who's it? So I'm thinking, like, yo, maybe it's one of my daughters or something. They coming in or kids coming in late. I'm like, let me go downstairs and see what's going on. So I go downstairs. I'm in my underwear. You know what I'm saying? I'm just walking downstairs. Big boy's neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. He is back in the neighborhood, man. The original GOAT, LL Cool J. Welcome back to the neighborhood, Thank Uncle you, man. L. Thank How you being, brother? Excellent, man. I know Excellent. you have. You look like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Feel you look good. like it, man. As, as you should. L, and, and, and we got so much to cover today, though, bro. Mm -hmm. But I want to start off with the most important part. Do you work out every day? <laughs> so I, that's hilarious. I work out. That's so hilarious. Yeah. I work out uh, at least a minimum of four times a week. Okay, because you know when we just shook hands out there and you hug me, you know that hurt. <laughs> hey, man, and he hurt. He knocked the air out of it, almost like bitched up. Like, oh, oh, and I was like, all right, here we go. Hip hop, hip hop. Yeah, no, but welcome back to the neighborhood, Thank you, man. man. We've seen each other, but it's been kind of a minute since we had a chance to really sit down and do this, man. 100%. The pandemic can't kept people, you know, doing their grind and so on and so forth. But I don't want to say we we can't call it a comeback. You've been here for years, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but just get, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but but just getting oh back to to LL that we know and love and that we've been rocking with for decades, man. You taking it back to arenas. You yeah. taking it back to the stage, yeah. man. Fifty years of hip hop, we are here. Yeah. Why was it important to put together this 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 tour, man? The force live frequencies of real creative creative uh, energy. energy. Um, you know the the whole vibe is just that I felt like you know um for too long hip hop has been served in a greasy brown paper bag, and mm. it was time to serve it on a silver platter. Yes, sir. Um, I also wanted to you know show uh, other artists and the fans. What's possible, and I owe it to my fans who have been there for me for many, many, many years um, to just get back on the road and just give them something that they haven't seen. So the idea is to, you know, put together after the Grammys, I got really inspired. Mm -hmm. You know, we performed at the Grammys. Yeah, that performed, was large, too. Um, Quest Love curated. We, we put together this unbelievable, you know, whole show with hey, Jesse man. Collins and the guys. And Go ahead. Let me tell you what's crazy about that, right? Now, mm -hmm. I've been a fan of hip hop, right? And my daughter is, my daughter's 14, she'll be 15 next year. Just mm -hmm. watching that 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 50 years, the, what you guys did at the mm -hmm. Grammys, bro, she she already loved music. But now she's in love with Public Enemy. See? She mm -hmm. loved Flavor Flav, man. And and I was somewhere one night at the awards, another award show, iHeart, and she was like, Flavor Flav was there? But it was an introduction to exactly. good music and good performances, man. Exactly. So... That's that's what we're doing. You know, it's it's going to be a nonstop, you know what I'm saying, mashup, you know, from mm -hmm. beginning to end. So, you know, it's me, it's the Roots, you know, yeah. DJ Z Trip, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Jazzy Jeff. Yes. And then, you know, we'll have different, you know, people in selected cities and you can get the lineup. I don't want to say the wrong people, but people in terms of the whole tour as Give we travel LA. around, gotcha. ab as we travel around the country, you'll have everyone from Queen Latifah to Red Man and Method Man, from Common to... Uh, Jada Kiss to Big Boy mm -hmm. to uh, Bone, Thugs. Bone Thugs and Harmony to we get a chance to see De La once from, again to De La Soul yeah. to um, it'll be so many Dougie unbelievable Fresh, acts Slick, Dougie Rick. Fresh and Slick Rick and uh, that, it'll be nonstop. So as soon as you walk in the building, you know you get you know you get your refreshments. You sit down. We off to the races. Like yeah. so, it ain't no stopping. It ain't no set changes. And these are performers, man. These yeah. are people yeah. that you know sound like what they sold you. And 100%, have a passion, hundred percent, and the, and the Sonics are going to be crazy. Yeah. I just want to, I just want, I think we the fans deserve some fun. I mean, why we did all, you feel it was necessary that you, that you pull it off? Because I mean, there we know that you love hip hop, hip hop loves you, but you're right. also extremely set. You know what I'm saying? Like, why did you feel it was important to do this, not just one show, man, but I'm, to take it on the road and do multiple shows in multiple cities? Man, I love it, and yeah. I love it when you know. The, I love to see the fans talk to each other. Yeah, I love man. to see the fans connect with each other. I love that energy that comes from, you know, giving them something that makes their lives easier. A lot of people are going through a lot of stuff right now. So yeah. it's it's a it's a perfect time for me to put a show out there that gives people the ultimate night 
of just fun, and yeah, they can just man. forget about their problems, and they can just enjoy whether it's memories or they're being introduced to something new. It's a chance for for auntie to bring her niece and for yeah. uncle to bring his nephew, and it's it's like the whole fam can come and rock out and go crazy off some hip hop. So it'll be it'll be like kind of for some people it'll be the first time they get to experience yeah. the golden era. For other people it'll be like it'll be br- bringing back memories and nostalgia, and it'll just all be served to people in a real modern way. So that oh, so they man. don't just see like it, it, you know so artists kind of you know moving around half stepping you know yeah. what I mean it'll be like at a high level ex- high level execution the way I like to do things. So, hey man, I saw you at the BET Awards one year. Yeah, bro, I was in the audience and I never sat down. And I was like, man. And then I just saw you recently again at the iHeart uh, Music Awards. Yeah. And I was like, man, this dude don't stop. It's I love not it. fifty people on stage with a mic. There's no 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 tracks really supporting under you, man. Like you go. Yeah. It's you know it's a lot of passion. I got a lot of passion for this, and I got I I think the fans deserve a real hip hop experience, man. Yeah. You know, um, look. You know, hip hop is turning fifty. It's gonna be the biggest birthday party in the world. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm man. saying? And you know, why not give people this? You know, look, if if you can go on tour, if, if you know, if Bon Jovi and them could go on tour, and if Bob Dylan and them could go on tour, and if Bono can go on tour, yeah. and if, you know, Rolling Stones Stone can still, go on tour, yeah. then LL Cool J can go on tour and give people what they what they love, you know what I'm saying, which is that pure hip-hop. When was I mean? the last time by choice? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you've always been hot as fish grease, you know what I'm saying? You could have <laughs> went any time. When was the last time by choice that you did a tour of this magnitude? I haven't done an arena tour in almost 30 years, man. That's Over 30 crazy. years. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done like I did one tour, Kings of the Mic, but that was a smaller tour, you know, you know me, you know we ran around on the road. But in terms of arena tours, it's been, you know, 3 decades. And I said, "You know what? It's Hip Hop's birthday." Yeah. Um they haven't seen me. I I feel like in a way, I've neglected them, and it's time for me to yeah, like you have. own up and yeah. just give them. I'm glad and, you're saying and that. And then, you know, the new record will come this year, too. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. I did a new record, you know, a new whole new album. Um, it was executive produced by Q-Tip. He did every beat. Yes. And, um, you know, we worked on the whole thing together at his house. And um, that's going to be really special, I think, because I'm going to show people what's possible. You know what I'm saying? I want to show people that you can have – longevity and mm-hmm. love hip hop and care about it and put do great things and do inspired pieces of art and inspired music you know what i'm saying yes, sir. and you don't have to um you don't have to pretend you're 14 and you don't have to be upset right. that you're not 14 right you can just as an artist, just gracefully mature and do great things. So if James Cameron can make a film, if Spielberg can make a film, LL can make an album. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And it's really that simple. That's how I look at it. Big Boy's Neighborhood, man. We got LL Cool J in the neighborhood. 50 years of hip-hop. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and you've been connected to hip-hop more than half professionally. Oh, of way those, more than yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, I've been connected to it my whole <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, your whole thing. So almost the entire time. Yeah, prof- As a professional, I came out in 84. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So so you you figure right now, that's what, is that 40? Am I tripping? 39. 39? Yeah, yeah so yeah, because we are 23. Yeah. Now, did you, when we celebrate the 50 years of hip-hop, what does that mean to LL Cool J? It means that um, the thing that I, I loved and appreciated and, and, and you know, it's it's at, and I don't look for validation. I'm not that dude, but this validates my feelings as a little boy loving this music. It was mm-hmm. the first time that I heard, you know, black people and brown people and you know, sound empowered. You know, when I was growing up, most of the time when I saw if I saw somebody on TV that looked like me, they was being put in a police car right. with cuffs on. Right. And um, then this thing, this hip hop thing came out, and all these tapes started floating around. These these names, these obscure names that many people don't know. You know, the the Cold Crush and yes, the Force sir. MCs and yes, the Fantastic sir. Romantic and, you know, the Treacherous Three and the yes. Fearless Four and all these names that now kind of sound like, well, for some people it's like, who's that? And for other people it's like, it means everything, yeah. right? Well, to me, it means everything. And it, it just, you know, I'm like the ultimate fan as well, you know, and that's the thing. Like, I started off as the ultimate fan of this and I'm still a, a huge fan of it. And because I'm a huge fan of it, that's why, you know, I put together... You know, the company rocked the bells. Yes, sir. That's why, that's why I did that because I want to see this culture treated properly with the type of respect and prestige and and, and, and acknowledgement and recognition that it deserves. And so the 50 years for me is, is just an opportunity for me to say thank you. 
Um, the mm-hmm. tour is an opportunity for me to say thank you. The yes, album is an opportunity for me to say thank you. It's an opportunity for me to move in gratitude instead of just like, um, you know, sitting there and staring at a pile of what a, success. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, yeah. We've seen so much with hip hop, man. And, and now you see hip hop, you know, you turn on your TV, they're rapping in commercials. You, 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 you turn on <laughs> any satellite, any stream, and any radio. Hip hop is the biggest genre I'm of music. I'm mopping the spot. Yeah, I'm mopping the spot. spot. <laughs> With a spot, that's hot. I'm mopping like the spot. Yeah, you, <laughs> and, and for real. But you've seen the evolution, man. When we couldn't get into buildings, we yeah. couldn't get insurance for shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember, dude, getting suspended for freestyling at school. Oh yeah. You know, j- j- it wasn't played on the radio. Then no. when it was played on the radio, you probably had a night. You know weekend, what I'm saying? On the weekends, yes, and you for about an hour or two, and and it wasn't what we see now, man. So no. when you see what hip hop is with this right. celebrating fifty years, you've seen a lot of evolution with hip hop. We've seen the oh, first, yeah. the first Grammys. We've seen the first TV shows. We've seen <laughs> graffiti rock. We've seen, you know, we've seen mm-hmm. all these shows, man. Tell me about some of those early days when when, when you saw. Hip hop before it got into these 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 rooms and these walk oh. through these doors. So so one of the fondest memory you can people can go on YouTube and check it out. Like I, when I was in Maine, I did a show in Maine and back in like maybe eighty four, and I actually had to explain yes. to the audience what hip hop was. Yes, and, what, and what what the DJ was doing, why he was doing the record back and forth in the crowd. And it was maybe 20, 30 kids in a gymnasium with a few parents, maybe 50, I don't know, not that many. It was right. very sparse because they didn't even know it. And I was explaining to them, okay, now my DJ is going to take the record. He's going to go back and forth with the record. I was like, I had to really like take them in through a yeah. tutorial to explain to them what we were doing. So that to me is like a great example of how much ground we've broke in, in hip hop culture. Like I literally had to introduce it to whole states. Yeah, man. You know, so, you know, whether we were going overseas, whether I was going to London, like, you know, like we like there was no industry. There mm-hmm. were no managers. There were right. no A and R's. There was nothing. Yeah. There was no infrastructure. It's like, you know, Inventing the car and there are no roads. Right, right, yeah. Like you know where do I mean? we go with this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like the like. You know, what I mean? you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where do we go? So, so it, it, what the beauty of it is, is that, you know, we actually got a chance to make the dream come true and make mm-hmm. the dream a reality. That's the beauty of it. What's amazing about it is that, you know, the 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 the, the dreams of a child, the dreams of of a, a youngster, the dreams of a, of a, a young man, um, you don't know. Like, the more realistic your dream is in your soul and in your heart, the more likely it is to become a reality in the in the material world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hey. And it's like, I, like I really dreamed it. You know what I'm saying? And when you see, when you say you really dreamed it, and, and you see the dream going now, yeah. And and you look at what what hip hop is, man. Yeah. There's sometimes, man, where I'm just like, man, please remember what it is. Well, and if you don't understand what this thing is that 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 we have, and I just also say, man, respect it too. Well, well, let me, let me tell you something about that, people. I think it's you know, respect is a great word, but I think it's the act. I, actually, for me, it's the opposite. Mm. I feel like I I owe it to the kids to show them, you know how it, you know what the how it started, so that right. they have something else to enjoy. Right. That's all. It's not about really. You can't respect something that you're not familiar That's with. That's true. You know, it's very hard to do that. But I feel like I owe it to them. Like you know, as a as a you know as an unk, you know, yeah. as a as a as a dude that's been in the game a long time, I owe it to the youth to say, look. You know, hey, I want to share this experience with you so that you can be understand where it started. It doesn't mean that you can't still go rock with whoever you love, Lil Baby or, you know, you name it. Like, you know, Glorilla. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whoever you love, you love. That's all good. I, I think it's beautiful because I listen to all of that music too. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It don't mean you can't go to the Big Steppers tour and do your thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's beautiful. I just feel like I owe it to the kids and I owe it to the, the fans to give them this this particular style of of hip hop and give them this version of a show yes, and sir. give them this be, so that that way you have it all because if I when I look at other genres those kids get to enjoy it all those fans get to enjoy the stones right. they get to enjoy right. you too they get to enjoy all of these acts so my thing is they should I should allow 
these kids and the the younger generation and, of course, my day ones to enjoy us, too. We shouldn't just walk away from it and abandon them. And I love you know I mean? that even with the tour, I love the size of the Thank arenas that it's coming to. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, yeah. I, I, I love that, man. What I do want to ask you, bro, we hear GOAT thrown around so much now. My right. introduction to GOAT, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. Was there anyone that said GOAT? Before LL Cool J. Well, no. Where I got the let me tell you where I got the term and why I coined the term. <clears throat> I got the term from two people. First of all, Muhammad Ali obviously said he was the greatest of all time, so right. I got it from Muhammad Ali. And then there was a street ball player named Earl Manigault, mm. but they called him the Goat. Right, and he right. was a street ball player and he was incredible in New York. So I just decided that I was going to take Goat and greatest of all time and make an acronym. And so then I, that's when I dropped my album in 2000. I yes. called it Goat. You know, featuring the greatest of all time. And then <clears throat> I had no idea that it was gonna gonna become part of the lexicon. Right. <clears throat> In terms of um who uh is the GOAT or isn't the GOAT, art the way art works is very simple. You know, it's about who impacts you. It's right. about who impacts the listener. It's not up to me to decide that I'm your GOAT. Right, right. That's not my job. Because I look at my because, son, and because, he'll say a basketball player is the GOAT. And that's okay. And he'll say, oh, LeBron's the GOAT. Let, you me, know? let me give you an example. It's just like a Rorschach test. You know what I mean? If you Or you stare at the Mona Lisa. If you stare at the Mona Lisa, one person may see a smile, one person may see a smirk. Right. It's about the artist. So the com- when, when, you, when you present art as an artist, the conversation is between the viewer or the listener and the art. It has nothing to do with you. Did you know what you had when you said goat? No, <laughs> or, yeah. no. I only, only no th- trademarks, no nothing. I, I, you know, I didn't a, a little bit, but I didn't really think about it like that. It was just something that was inspired, and I just came up with it, and then it became a part of the global lexicon. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you know, for me, anytime it's used, you know, even when it refers to someone else. I know I did that, right. and that, that makes me feel amazing as an artist. You know, when you create a, a, a an acronym that that some people don't even know is associated with me because right. they are born at a different time right. and have associated it with different people, but I know. And so we don't that's, just use... That's a blessing. Go is not just used for hip-hop. For everything. It's everything. Mm. Right. Like, oh, he's, right. he's, he's the GOAT. Oh, but she's But that the shows you the power of art. Yeah, man. That shows you what you can do. Like, one person can make a huge, huge difference. So when... You sitting there in the classroom, or when you sitting there in the in a in a school, or when you when you're sitting there at your job, you have to understand the power that you personally have. Because I'm no different from you. It's just that I believe in the beauty of my dreams and I go for it. Hey man, you know what, what about mean? Uncle? You know what I'm saying? Like everybody say, oh, that's that's Uncle right there. Yeah. But you like one of On the first people baby. that I said, Uncle On, L, future other right. I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Uncle. And then everybody started yeah. saying Uncle. Like people call Uncle, oh, that's Uncle Snoop. But Uncle was the first yeah. time I said that, I was in my twenties. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, who uncle, uncle is this? Future of the funk. Yeah. I'm like, who yeah. uncle is this? Yeah. yeah. Because where did that come from to come out with Jingling Baby? And the first thing that come out your mouth is Uncle L. Because it's just like, you know, I'm not quite your daddy, but you know what I mean? <laughs> hey man, but you gotta not think, quite your daddy. When but we I'll look in uncle. the rearview mirror, it's genius. Thank you. It's like, oh, it's genius. But Thank as you. we're rolling and we're looking through the windshield, yeah, we don't know what uncle is. I'll we don't you. know what goat what 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 goat is going to be. The same way when Lil Wayne when when they talk about bling bling, they was like, man, we didn't know bling bling was going to be that. He's right. Yeah. It's like because you do what's inspired. Right. When you're inspired, you just answer the inspiration. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. You answer the call of inspiration. You know what I'm saying? And you don't you don't question it. I don't question it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I'm I'm not afraid to do different things and and make certain moves. Like I just do what I'm inspired to do. And let the chips fall where they may. You know what I'm saying? When you go to do a tour like what, what, what's coming up, right. do you have to listen back to songs? Because you're already doing shows. You'll, you'll mm-hmm. do a show here. You'll do a show there. Mm-hmm. But do you ever look back at your catalog and say, man, I made a lot of music? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Because we have playlists that I rock to that's just LL, right? And people know the hits. But I've always been 
LL like the albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And, I and 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 I, and I come from man. I hope you put another verse on here because I want to. I want to know what that second verse is gonna be. I want to know what that third verse is going. Oh, I see what he did with these words right here. You know, so yeah. I, do you look at your material? 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, like I tell you now, like even with the tour, like it's not only going to be a bunch of radio hits. Right, right. There will be a lot of big hits. You will have a great night of music with familiar music. I caught You'll, that at the BET yeah, when you, you did that too. I was like, oh, he doing. Oh man. But we gonna have yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's about the art. It's about the experience, the hip hop experience. It's not just about like some kind of commercial thing. So this tour. Is not like, like incredibly enough. Like and like, I am commercial as an entity, but my music is still. It's not really commercial, mm -hmm. like that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm commercial. Like I'm very well known all over the world, but my music is like a, a slightly underground and in a different place. And so this is going to be an opportunity for people to really dig into something that maybe isn't so familiar. You know what I mean? I made lots of albums before they had Grammys. Right, You know yeah. what I'm saying? So there's like, you know, like Grammys for hip hop. So yeah. it's like, this is a, a great opportunity for people to feel a vibe, to, to get a whole experience. That's why the force, frequencies of real creative energy. You got to be on that frequency, that mm -hmm. real creative energy. That's what I want to bring to the show. That's what I want people to experience. The fans deserve it. You know what I'm saying? They deserve to be walking out the arena holding hands yeah, like, man. yo, that was crazy. Yeah. Like, I want to give them that. Yeah, because you know I mean? we know that feeling. Yeah. And we know that feeling, man. Do you ever wish that you could be in that audience watching this show? Oh, my God. Yeah, because we I don't know what's coming be. next. I probably will be. Yeah. yeah. I probably will be. But I've noticed be. you in the audience at a, like, you're a fan of hip-hop. Let me tell you something. There are so many, so many hip-hop concerts that I've went to that people don't know where I was sitting in there with a hoodie on. Right. Oh. So many. You're lucky I didn't know. I'd be like, that's LL so right many. there. <laughs> so many. LL's and trying like, to hide. Yo, I've done nosebleeds. I've done nosebleed seats. I've done. I don't front know, run. L, because Bro. you got like this certain walk. They don't know me. As soon as you lick they your lips, I'll be like, hey, they dude, that's know me. fucking LL cool not with that, right there. Not with that hoodie and that yeah, baseball hat on and like, <laughs> just you, like, 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 nah. What's some show, what are some of the shows that you've been to that, that you liked? I don't want to say. Right. I don't want to say. I don't want to say. What's the next ones you coming up to? It's been quite a few. Nah, it's been a few, though. It's been a few. Because you're a fan of yeah, it, though. Yeah, it's been a few. <laughs> LL, with you saying, man, I'm known all over the world, and not braggadociously, you just mm -hmm. are. Can you walk up to a concert or, let's say, the Super Bowl or a championship game, can you walk up without a ticket? Absolutely not. Really? I, I, or you won't? <laughs> well, I've never really tried. I probably let's could. Let's try it. Yeah. 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 Today in the news, LL Cool J yeah. apparently yeah. was too big for his britches as he was escorted into a police car. Now for everybody trying got to this. Get too. into the big steppers <laughs> door. Everybody be like this, like, oh, look at him. That's LL right there. That's LL. That's one of the tours you snuck into. But yeah, now you you, you can't even get fronted on anymore because everybody be like, oh, LL trying to get in. He don't have a ticket. Oh, yeah. So yeah, this, this device is, is totally different, man. LL Cool J weaseled his way into the <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> Talk yeah. many years money. ago. Yeah, yeah see? Wow. He named yeah. his shows that he's been to now. He was probably at that weekend concert like, man, I came in here dressed in a hoodie and this dude uh, did four songs and left. Yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I love the weekend because he, he talking crazy over like soft pop uh -huh. beats. Yeah, and he man. talking greasy. My man said, we robbed you for your Jordans. So I'm like, wait, hold on, man. <laughs> wait, you did what? You took Talk a line and did what? Yeah. You cut that ivory into skinny pieces <laughs> yeah. and all that. Yeah, and we just out there like, oh, my love son. It. I'm like, you don't know I what he's it. saying, huh? I all love right, it. You don't know what he's saying. I love it. LL Cool J was such a great catalog. Mm -hmm. Is there a, if like let's say if there were five songs mm -hmm. that is on an LL Cool J playlist that you would play, mm -hmm. what would those <clears> songs <throat> be? You could, we can go five, maybe ten. Man, I mean, I I don't know, man. Because yeah. you know what it is. To keep it real with you. All you can, when it comes to creating a song, all you can put into the song is where whatever experiences and where you're at at that moment in time, right? So like, like a song that I always loved is doing it. Mm -hmm. I just love it because I just you think, did that well. You know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Doing it is like a song that I think it it, it, it for me has the perfect balance of like edge and hardness yeah. and softness and like it's just like I really like that song. Um, but there's a lot of them like that. Like I'm bad. Like which is a you know, an earlier song I did was, like, to me has a perfect balance. Yeah, um, man. Those two, like, really have a perfect balance. I think, um, you know, I Need Love in a lot of ways in a different way has a very um, unique quality to it. Did you know, I coming from, like, 
Rock the Bell, like the original Rock the Bells. And you know what I'm saying? Where, mm-hmm. where it was just beats, you know, drum machine and you and you. And then when you do something like an I Need Love. Right. And did you know? For those who don't know it, you should YouTube it or Google it or something, you know. What, I Need Love? Yeah. Oh, I was just assuming everybody knew it. My bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but, but, but if you have to Google it. But that that was at a time, man, when we was like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And radio. Yeah. And, and then you come with I Need Love. Did you come with I Need Love? Or you know how you had a Russell Simmons that told them, no, let's do Walk This Way and it'll be a big hit. Right. Did you... Come with I Need Love. Did you know it? Or somebody was like, man, you should slow it slow it down and sing no, no, something no, no, for no. the ladies. No, that was purely inspired. And right. it wasn't for the ladies. It was for me. Right, I hear you. You know, I needed love. You know, the ladies may have, it may have appealed to them. It, it, I was around then. I don't think you really needed love. I saw you at like the, <laughs> the BREs and, you know what I'm saying? I don't, but let, let, let's go with it. Okay, so well, let's, well, let's go. That's you different love. from love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no yeah, different from yeah. love. I didn't need that. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you know. But I still was selective. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. I wasn't just ripping and running. Yeah. So so when you do an I Need Love, right. were you hesitant at first or you just knew, like, this is time, man? You, you know what's funny? Like, I just did what was what felt right to me. I didn't even think about it like that. Wow. Like, it's, it's about, like, you know, no fear. This is what I like. All I can do is do what I like. I liked it. Because you got to think, man. You know what I'm saying? Any I, I rhyme like early on, he circumcised DJs when he's on the airwaves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> to the that's mission's pre- That's brutal. Yeah. With the vinyl. You go, I need love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but it's always like, who do you love? Like, yeah. th- there's just songs where I never, like, man, what L I was doing? Because you can make something over here. Yeah. And then you'll make something where it's like, oh, don't forget these skills. So, so you know what it's like? It's like, you know, it's like a basketball player who can dribble with his left, he can dribble with his right, mm-hmm. he can drive left, he can drive right, he can cross it, he can do jump shots, he can do, you know, he right. can do threes, he, he can block, he can do defense. It's like that. So when you look at the type of music I make, you can go from a mama said knock you out to an around the way girl to a I need oh love Lord. to a going back to Cali to a lounging to a doing it to like you can and there's all these various styles because because that's just who I am as a human being. When you hear you know Biggie's I mean? going back to Cali, mm-hmm. when was the first time you heard Biggie's going back to Cali? Mm-hmm. And we are we had your going back to Cali as well. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, the first, I used to play it all the time. I used to play it all the time. Like, I, I loved it. Going, going, back, 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 back to, to Cali. Cali. I love it. Yeah. I, you know, he, he name dropped me. I mean, Rick Ross did I'm Bad over on one of his albums early on. I mean, like, that. that's part of it. Look. If you're not being used as source material, then I guess you that's that's kind of the stamp that you're a true artist. Mm-hmm. When other artists use you as source material, you know what I'm saying? When they use you for inspiration, that's showing that you've really touched the world. And what's the beauty of it is, is when when you really know it's deep, is when other people don't even know that they've utilized you for source material. Right. So I can sit there and I can watch a kid listening to Going Back to Cali and by Biggie, and I could just sit there and say to myself, Wow, I did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Like, that's an incredible feeling because it, there's something beautiful about the fact that you've inspired other artists and they're touching fans with with utilizing you as inspiration. You never lost your love for, like, hip-hop. Nah, I you love know? it. And we did see, you know, you have a great acting career as well. And we were talking about, like, man, you know how when some people, they get in and you see a Childish Gambino and it's like, oh, I'm Childish Gambino when I make records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and you, you'll see people where it's like, oh, they don't use their their stage name anymore. Right. <laughs> Why was it important for you to still be LL Cool J when it came to any of your acting or any of your television, any, any credits? Because I, I can't see any advantage to not using my name. Mm-hmm. Like why? <laughs> right, right. Why would I do Wake that? Wake up the like, next morning. Like, you're gonna change the. I'm, uh, oh, I'm I'm James Todd Smith. <laughs> right. Past the Grey Poupon. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? What does that have to do with the the, the character? Because the reality is, if you bring the character to life, they shouldn't be thinking about right. that anyway. Right, right. They so, shouldn't be sitting there thinking right. like, man, all we do is rock the bells. Right. We, so <laughs> we're yeah, covering yeah, up yeah. this body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a federal agents. I need love. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? You know, be you know working what I mean? it in. <laughs> you know, like so. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, right, like I just know. like there was time when like there was people who would be like, "Yo, you should, you know, you know, be James Todd Smith." Um, you know, so people know you're serious. And I'm like thinking to myself, why would I give away my advantage? Right. Yeah. 
You yeah. want me to give away my advantage, B? You want me to like not use something that would actually get people interested in coming to see what I'm acting in? Have you had, put, because I want to be taken seriously? With such a great acting career for decades now. Right. Have you ran into people or still run into people that don't know that LL Cool 100%. J is an is an artist? Of course. Yeah. Like I like I said in, in the um in the in the promo teaser, you know, um, you know, for, for the tour, mm-hmm. you know, which people should Google the the, the, the tour. You yeah, know y'all did a trailer. I'm yeah, like, we man, did a trailer the for the tour. <laughs> it's like it's like there are a lot of people, oh, you, you a host, you, you know, you do TV shows, you you do of course. Like, and I hear you I hear those voices in my own head, like, oh wow, like Damn, they they probably don't even know me for my music because they see me host the Grammys, or right. they may not know me for my music because they know I do the TV show and they see me like, you know, doing that, or they may not know me because they see me doing this other thing, or that's part of it. Like, I get all of that. That's the reason I want to do it. That's the inspiration. The inspiration is to lean into those fears, lean into that vulnerability, lean into all of those things that make people say like. And you have people that just might legitimately think I don't care or don't need it. Mm-hmm. There's that. Which, it's not like that. I do want to hear my songs on the radio. I do want to do a tour. I do want people to, you know, come to the tour and enjoy it and be part of what I'm doing. Because that's, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's why I'm on the planet. This is why I'm here. Do you, it's pretty obvious. Do you miss that sometimes? You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you're on a set or you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do any shows right now. Do, <laughs> do you get a calling for something like this? You absolutely this? get a calling. Yeah. You absolutely get a calling. Man, I, I love what we do. You know, I love like being here at the channel, you know, mm-hmm. talking to you. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, like hip hop is is everything to me. You know, it's my first love. Mm-hmm. You know, acting is my second love. Right. I'm very clear about that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I love it, man. Like, this is what we do. Like, let's let's you know, let's get it all the way in. Like, you know, let's show the world, you know, what LL is. There's a reason why I've been around here so long. There's a reason why. Mm-hmm. And it ain't, it ain't like I just. Uh, I'm just here because I don't have an a POV, right? Right. So it's like there gotta be a reason. So come see why. You and know what I mean? Now we've seen so much hip hop, and hip hop always had like it's you know, it had its beefs. And beefs were a little different. It was still <laughs> What's ridiculous. Beef? Yeah. <laughs> but but you you went through it and, and just off the top of my head, of right. course, Ice T, Kumo D, <laughs> Cannabis. Uh, Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and this is Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson was like security. Yeah, he, he was crazy, crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, security. Man. But you never ran away from a no. beef, and we just recently had Ice T. Mm-hmm. And for those that know, there was some. There was always, you know, Ice is gonna be on the West Show, see, West Coast yeah, shows, by the way. Which is which yeah. is which is lovely, man. And he yeah. got decades in his show, and you got decades in your show, and decades. In, in y'all genre, but we talked to Ice Q, Ice T about this here. Hey man, <laughs> I saw a picture with you and LL Cool J. And, any, and anybody that know some of the history of Ice T and LL Cool J, y'all managed to have you know the so the beef. Yeah, but y'all managed to <laughs> exist. You know what I'm saying? The beef was the beef with LL was me. You know, I take. I, I oh, you said can it. say that now. No, I set it off. And the reason I did it was because at the time I was trying to come up out of L.A. Mm-hmm. And L.L. was like, I'm the greatest of all time. And the only way you're going to come up out of a city like L.A. is say, I don't think so. Right. <laughs> right. Because L.A. only only respects gangster. So mm. I said, nah, I don't think so. And that was it. It was a challenge. And, you know, we went back and forth. I dissed him on, uh, I dissed him on uh, I'm Your Pusher. Yeah. And he came back for the break of dawn. Mm-hmm. I did him on another song called The Syndicate. But mm-hmm. it never got hostile. And uh, the funny thing was um, I ran into LL Cool J in Monte Carlo. Mm-hmm. I heard that. How how international? See how, how hip hop? <laughs> <laughs> not in a Monte Carlo, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so not the Monte Carlo Hotel in Vegas. <laughs> in the French Riviera, mm-hmm. and we were at a TV convention, and I saw L, and I walked over to him, and I said, "Yo, man, you know, no hard. This is this how is long how long ago is this? Maybe ten years ago. Okay, that's how long it been since I ever was in LL's presence, and I said, "No, man, no hard feelings, man. You know, he said ice." It, it was the culture. Mm-hmm. It was the culture. Hey, man, it was the culture. Just the culture. I yeah. mean, it's all good. Like, listen, I never had a personal, personal beef with anybody that I, you know, well, battled on wax or, you know, went back and forth with on wax like or on vinyl. It's all good. Like, right. Yeah, like, 
I don't take it. I'm not going to get butt hurt. Right. You diss me on a record. <laughs> hey, man, when he said to the break of dawn, oh, I remember. Oh, poor baby. You mad. <laughs> he dissed you on the record. Hey, man, my you thing was. You want to shoot his car because he dissed you on the record. When he said, what is a panther? That, that's to the break of dawn, right? What is yeah, a panther? what is an a panther? An, an animal that kills. Yeah. I'm like a shark with blood coming, coming out the gills. gills. You can never in your wildest, wildest dreams get a piece of this gangster lean straight, straight from Queens. Queens. Woo! Strong Man. as liquor to be seen in a, in a limousine. Now, now you're, you're getting, getting done with without Vaseline. Vaseline. And that, I just played that for Jose. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's where Ice Cube yeah. took no Vaseline yeah, cut it on to do his diss yeah. no against Vaseline. NWA. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the evolution of hip hop, bro. Yeah. The ev- that's why I also when I see the Rock the Bells channel yeah. on, on satellite, man, yeah. and I see the Rock the Bells channel, and I know there's a, a Rock the Bells cruise that's coming up. Yeah, the festival. Now we see what's that. going down with the festival. We see what's going down with, with, the, uh, with the tour. It's crazy, man, because if we don't do this for ourselves, that's right. who's going to do it? Exactly. My grandmother used to say, God bless the child that has his own. And my thing is, you know, I used to hear artists wanting um, more respect, wanting more prestige, wanting to be recognized. And I said, well, you know, l- let me help them. Mm-hmm. And so what I decided to do was, and this is kind of crazy, but it's true. I just did for hip hop recently in these recent years what I was doing for my my personal career right, my whole life. Right. I just decided to apply it for everybody. And, and so if you look at it now, if you look at the difference of from how on in in terms of how timeless hip hop and classic hip hop is viewed now versus 10, 12 years ago, right. look at the difference. And you know what? I had a chance to bear witness and we had a we had a private conversation too that I, I won't totally bring up on air. But there was just there was just something that was said about, you know, our forefathers of hip hop. And you was like, Big, you was like, I said that because they probably didn't have the voice or the platform yeah. to to come back and say, you know, so I said it for I said it for Herc. I said, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. So and when you say I'm doing things now for the culture, yeah. for the masses, for many that yeah. I did for myself. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it like the whole culture's the goat. You right. Know what I'm yes, saying? yes, sir. I'm treating I'm treating hip hop in general like it's precious. It's an art form that changed lives. It changed your life. It changed their lives. Yeah, it changed we lives are of here, producers, bro. cameramen, writers, directors, you yeah. know, all kinds of people. People it got physicians through school. It got people like who played football and basketball and baseball, yeah, listened to it, got inspired. Like so my thing is, if we don't get the narrative right now, I want to get the narrative right now so three, four, five hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, people understand what it is. I don't want it to be just a big popularity comp t- uh, contest where you have four acts who were the biggest biggest on the charts and they're the only ones that are recognized right. purely by as a consequence of their, their chart positions because that's not the be-all, end-all. And I also don't want it to become like a contest about business acumen because mm. no one cares about how much money Miles Davis has in the bank. Right. Nobody care. I, I've never heard someone say, "Oh, Miles Davis. Well, how much money did he have? That'll right, tell me right. if he's credible." Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? How many followers? Yeah. How many followers does Miles <laughs> Davis have? Now he's a jazz musician. Okay. How many? Only yeah. ten thousand. Oh, right, Miles Davis yeah. ain't nobody. Right. Like, come on. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing. It's like we gotta treat the culture the right way and and honor all of these guys, and also they have to in return honor all generations of fans when they make these when they go out there and do it so like to to put put it out there the right way if i owe you a great show i owe you top level execution i owe you you know mm-hmm. to make sure that you feel like i put my all into whatever i do when i do something one thing people know for certain i'm gonna put a thousand percent into yeah. it like ain't gonna be no i'm just out here doing it for the money or you know i don't even want to talk about money right like, right right i'm out here doing it because I'm an artist. See, I'm a, but can I talk about money real quick? And I know you don't want to. I'm not counting your money. But years ago, I remember, man, when you said uh, some suckers don't like me, but I'm not concerned. Was it yeah. six G's for 20 minutes is the pay yeah, I earned? Yeah. Back then, I was like, six G's for 20 minutes? I got to tell you. I got to tell you, in the real world, that's still a lot of money. Yeah, man. hell yeah, Like, we get confused. But I definitely can't get you for six. <laughs> I can't get you for six G's for 20 minutes right now. Like, no, you probably get me for free. Yeah, I did. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's like. I but, did. You know what I'm saying? I got you but, for my birthday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I had the six G's just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 
would have took it. Yeah. Every dime. You know, I still take that six. If y'all want to give me 6000 when I'm on my way out, by all means, hand me the 6000 I'm yeah. very comfortable. Yeah, man. Oh, ladies, are you comfortable with 6000 Hey, man, that's yeah. why I tell people. I'm like, man, there's no, there's no such thing called extra money. You know yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it off. How much is enough? Yeah. More. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Today's price. You know what I'm saying? It's not yesterday's price. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood, boy. LL Cool J in the neighborhood. For real, for real. If I ask you something and it's for real, for real, Give me for real, for real. So right. false for false. Give me for false for false. All right. He scrapped his first stage name because of a drug reference. He went by <laughs> Jay Ski. Well, yeah, I did. You know. <sighs> right. Jay Ski. Well, uh, not the, the reason for false for false. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's the wrong. It, 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 I did scrap it, but not for that reason. Right, but what? that's why I was thinking. I was like, what does Jay Ski have to do with Serving well, something, the, but yeah, well, but the, well, the, the ski, ski the, the, oh, yeah, the, the get snow. down, yeah. yeah, the powder. All right, All right. so, yeah. so, but you, how long were you Jay Ski? For a couple of years. Can you imagine? I had some other names before that too. Can you imagine we had like yeah, Jay Ski in the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like like my name before LL before I did Big Boy was uh, MC Scratch, and I thought it was clever because I rapped in DJ, and I was like, man, MC for the rapping. DJ for the scratch and scratch for the DJ. Yeah. Can you imagine you getting up? You're like, who's on my itinerary? They're like, oh, you got to go do uh, MC Scratch. In know? the neighborhood? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MC Scratch in the neighborhood. All righty, LL. And you haven't given me this one, man. An intruder broke into his house around 2 a.m. For real, for real. Yeah. And LL, you know I've asked you about this a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you one more time? Yeah. What the hell happened in your house? Huh. So, uh, <laughs> all right, I, I, I tell you. So a dude, uh, you know, it was about 2 in the morning. And, uh, you know, my alarm went off. Not not the alarm, but the entry alarm. Like, in other words, like, if you have an alarm, when you walk in your house, the alarm goes, yeah. and gives you a chance to turn it off. So that went off. So he came through an entry door. So I'm like, you know, who's it? So I'm thinking, like, yo, maybe it's one of my daughters or something. They coming in or kids coming in late. I'm like, let me go down and see what's going on. I said, Simone, I'm like, yo, who's that? I don't know. I said, okay. So I go downstairs. I'm in my underwear. You know what I'm saying? I'm just walking downstairs. So I'm going to say, eh, don't turn on the lights. So I'm going to see what's, just, what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, eh, I ain't going to turn the light on. I'm uh -huh. just going to go downstairs. I walk down the steps. Some Charles Manson look alike come walking. Like, he comes In out the kitchen. House. Yeah, he comes out the kitchen as I'm coming down the steps. And then we was off to the races. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> hey, Al. And as we talking about it, bro, you can just say for real, for real. For real. I heard you beat the dog shit out of that dude. For real. Yeah. <laughs> for hey, real, man, for real. He was man. probably like, let me call 911. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me call 911. Yeah, 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 he was yeah, like, man, yeah, just yeah. get me out of here. Yeah, 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 that's a violation yeah. in the let house. Let me tell you something. I don't want to tell you. Look, look, I'm a good guy. I'm not a nice guy. Right, There's a right. difference. <laughs> right. There's a difference. Yeah, I ain't man. nice at all. I'm good. I'm I good tell guy. people, I'm like, man, nice guy. I, I tell people, I'm not offensive, but my defense is immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You you come in my crib, bro. That'd be, <laughs> hey, man, that'd be the last one. Yo. He probably was like, no, nah, I ain't coming to that. And what now, up? Yeah. He was like, hey, <laughs> hey dude, then he at, you refused know, whoop, to lose. <laughs> here's your quick. Here's, uh, here the drummer get wicked. Hey, man, he was probably <laughs> looking at you like, is this the GOAT? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, and L, you were solid dude so i know that must have hurt man oh my god bro you you you, you taught a lesson we got to know each other oh uh, yeah as you should man all right now michael jackson named his album bad because of ll cool j i don't know if it was but i don't know right I, I, but there's for, something there there is there is right. you know mr jones who's my mentor you know russell had let them hear it and all that but i can't say that so I, i'll go for false for false mm -hmm. but i'll say that we were on the same page at that time LL you know Cool J laughed at Jay Z while he was rapping in high school. I just saw this too, and you cleared it up. But but you laughed. But and, and please explain the story of this isn't a grown man no, laughing at some on, kid dude. trying dude, to get on. I, I, look, I we hardly we remember We all the that same stuff. age. I love everybody. Look, right. I, I don't have no problems with none of these guys, man. Like you know, if I laughed, okay, so what? Laugh at me. Right. All right, right. Like, you know, uh, you know, like it, how many, like how many people have you laughed or snapped on in the, in the, in the lunch room? Yeah, like, man. come on, be like, yeah. yo, give your man a pass on that nonsense, man. It's, it's ridiculous. Hey, man, I don't even remember it. It's crazy you know what, what people, like, what, what people bring up or remember. Like, yo, really? Well, maybe I did laugh. You, you know, know what I'm saying? But, you know, but, but yeah, uh, everybody. Uh, did y'all go to uh, the uh, same uh, high school? I laughed at you, so now I can't have no brunch. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, man, but you do that Magic Johnson getaway. Yeah. Hey, man, have, no. have you been to the brunch? <laughs> for false, for false. <laughs> hey, man, I haven't been to the brunch either, so I'm for false, for false. 
<laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was like, yeah, he was, he was laughing at me in high school. <laughs> we definitely not going to that yeah, brunch now. We we definitely not going to brunch. I can't have no finger food. <laughs> yeah, <What's up? laughs> man. Oh, my God. I love everybody. Man. Uh, uh, what was the one moment in your career that you really felt like, oh, I made it? Oh, man. I, I When Rick Rubin, mm. back in the days when, when Rick Rubin called me up, you know, um, when I when I first sent my demo in, Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys gave it to Rick Rubin. He called when he called me back. I walked in the house and my grandmother tore his name to shreds because oh. she could not remember a name no matter what it was. <laughs> so she's like Dick Dubin, yeah. Slick Slick yeah. Lubin, some guy named Rubik's Slick Cube Lubin, like you. yeah, Rubik's Cubin, yeah. like all that. Cubin and, links, yeah, uh, Cubin links. Got... Yo, so that was the moment because. That was the call that I had been waiting for. Before mm-hmm. that, I had got a lot. I have gotten three, four, five different rejection letters when I would send my oh, demo out. Man. I had been rejected. You know, and my mother, she happened to get a tax return at that time. She bought me a drum machine. And that drum machine, I used it with my man. We made a demo. And then, you know, Rick, you know what I'm saying, called me back. So that was the moment. So now I'll tell you one other moment, just a little deeper in, is that my first show I ever did was at a high school, right? Um, um, the Manhattan Center. And, uh, you know, when we was on the way to the show, my man Cut created his car, mm-hmm. his cutlass, oh, the axle God. broke. Oh, the axle God. broke on the car. So I'm like, and he's like, yo, my car. I'm like, yo, we got to go. He like, I said, he said, so what we got? I said, leave your car. Leave my car. Yo, we got to go, man. Right. So we left the car and walked like 10, 20 blocks. Went to the Cut show. Cut walked 20 blocks? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We walked, we walked there. He was a wrestling champ back then. I, I so we walked, see nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> so we walked to the, we walked to the show. And um, after the show, I did the show. They pushed the lunch tables together. I did the show, and then I was signing autographs after. And um, you know, you know, and I looked at Cut, and he was looking at me. He was like, "Yo, I like this." I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I like it too." <laughs> like, he was you signing autographs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was the moment. And that then was you moment. was like, "Who Bernadette?" And then you thinking that like, "Man, I'm gonna get back to the car." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, I yo. I hey man, even with the evolution of hip hop, when you think of Z Trip, we think of Cut Creator, we think about the great DJ Bobcat, remember, DJ yeah, Bobcat. Oh my God, man! And and, and even, man, E Love. You know what I'm saying? E Love was the one who used to hold the radio, yeah. and then it went down to a cassette player. Well, E Love is actually now, the Public Enemy logo. Now he, silhouette. Oh. So that silhouette on the public and like that's your sweatshirt, crazy. that Public Enemy logo is actually my hype man, E Love. That's yeah, his man. silhouette. Oh, Chuck wow. D took the picture so what of is, E Love and made that silhouette. Yeah, E Love, he go out on the show. What, what is he? Will he hold like a streaming cord now, or you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know how you give music different? Like hold the, the iPhone, the, yeah, <laughs> the big radio. Yeah, he like this. Yeah, now. yeah, out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Word up. But the big radio was like that was like hip hop, and I saw a picture of you yeah. also where you sitting on the radio. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I, I always gonna love that boombox. Always gonna, yeah, you know, man. that's always gonna be part of it. You know what I'm saying? It's man. part of the culture. LL, I thank you for coming into the Thank neighborhood you. Thank once you. again man LL Cool J man and, and he's been on stage but not like this going back to the arenas man uh, with the, the force live with man the roots, frequency crazy. of real creative energy for LA is going to be LL Cool J Jazzy Jeff Rock Kim Salt and Pepper Ice T Z Trip The Roots and no telling what else oh gonna it's going to be a lot of special guests yeah, going to be there so a lot of special you, guests man. as well and our dates are in September 3rd at the Kia Forum yep. thank you for taking care of hip hop my man thank you, you for being a veteran and relevant at the same time. Got that from E40. My but man. thank you, my brother, and I relevant. appreciate you, man. You my know, man. hello. Now, if you're gonna make up another thing, I'm gonna trademark it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you just be giving up jewels and you didn't, you don't yeah. cash out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm open source. Yeah, gonna, yeah. I guess you know. Wait, say something else. No, oh, no, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> LL Cool J in the neighborhood, big boys neighborhood. Peace.